So I mentioned Tristan's ability to switch on to DeMar and Corey and guys like that. We've talked a lot about Tristan with his offensive rebounding, but that switchability with him, what does that mean to you guys defensively? Well, um, Double T definitely does things that doesn't show up in the box scores besides, obviously, we know about his rebounding ability. But his ability to be able to switch out on guards and um, it allows the other four guys to stay home at bay. You know, and, you know, he made DeRozan take a couple t contested shots, uh, made Corey take some contested shots uh, around the basket, and it allowed us to clean glass. So, um, you know, his ability to be able to slide his feet versus guys that's, you know, shorter than him, guards, small forwards, whatever the case may be, it's, it's, it's big time for our, for our ball club. Dave. LeBron, when you guys acquired Corver, the assumption was that you and Kyrie would set him up for wide open looks. What ways has he actually helped you be better, Kyrie be better out on the court? I mean, he's automatic. Um, when he steps on the floor, eyes have to be on him. And uh, even when they made their run in the second quarter, just his three, the pump fake, let DeRozan fly by, shot, kind of quieted the crowd a little bit, you know. So, um, you know, just his ability to be out on the floor, it, it just helps us out a lot, all of us, all offensively, because it just creates more space. Um, so, um, you know, like I said, from the time that we got him all the way to now and, and as we continue to play, you know, throughout the postseason, he's, uh, he's been huge for our ball club. Is there anything else? Michael. LeBron, uh, Michael Grange here from Sportsnet. Uh, with Kyle Lowry out, uh, what did you think the effort DeMar DeRozan uh, put in and, and what impact did it have on the game from your point of view? I said a post game, um, you know, on the telecast, I think ESPN covered the game tonight. Um, DeRozan was amazing. I mean, he gave everything that he had. He, you know, we knew it's, <laughs> if you watched the last series when he didn't uh, have a field goal, he usually bounced back. And that's what great players do. They bounce back when they have games like, you know, the game two game he had. And, uh, you know, he was knocking down his mid range. And, you know, we're, we're, one of 30 teams or 29 teams to try to keep him off the free throw line. We weren't able to do that tonight. Um, so he was in such a great groove. And, you know, for a score in our league, we just try to make it tough on him throughout the whole way and see if we can weather the storm. And I think, you know, uh, we did that in the fourth quarter. John. LeBron, John Schumann, NBA.com. Um, does the taking care of business tonight uh, signify a step forward at all for you guys, given sort of the inconsistencies in, in the regular season and, and some of the close calls in the first round? Um, well, we just want to try to get better every game, and I think uh, tonight we did that once again. Uh, we knew we was coming to a hostile environment. We knew they was going to give us everything they had, no matter who was in the lineup, and we just had to weather the storm. And then we didn't know if it was going to take, you know, 36 minutes or 40 minutes, um, but we knew if we just just played our game, we paid attention to our details, um, then we will have an opportunity to, to win the game. And I think uh, we stuck to our game plan as close to 48 minutes once again, and we took another step forward. Jason. I know this is probably going to sound stupid, and you just got done talking about sweeps, and you're not focused on sweeps, but do you have to learn how to sweep a team, and how do you sweep a team? Because Kyle was saying earlier that he's been part of one seeds before, but it's he's not used to teams being part of a team that can sweep teams like you guys do, and whether or not you're focused on it or not, this team has obviously got a pretty good record of sweeping teams. How do you do that? Is that something you have to learn, or how do you go about that? No, it's definitely a different mindset. It's, uh, it's very difficult, you know, because we're all prideful players, all 30 teams and 15 guys. on We're all prideful, so, you know, when you're back against the wall, um, you're playing for pride, you're playing for, you know, the, the habits that you've built all year, so you become a very, very dangerous team. Um, for myself, I, I don't know. I just focus on that game. I don't really think about the sweep. I don't really think about anything else besides how can I, as a leader of the ball club, put our guys in position uh, to be successful. And if we're able to, um, you know, stick with the game plan, um, if we're able to go out and play our game, either if it was Cavaliers basketball or, or Heat basketball, if we can do that to close to 48 minutes, we're going to give ourselves a good chance. And... Um, and I've been a part of, of a couple sweeps. Marla. It seems like the way things are going now, like guys like JR and Shumpert and Corver are kind of doing something they are not used to doing. Like Corver can have a big game one every seven. And JR and Shumpert kind of the defensive stoppers at this point in their lives. Do you admire that 
kind of it seems like kind of a sacrifice on their part. Well, I think uh, all three of them are all capable of having a breakout game, and that's what I, that's why they complement each other. It could be Jr. one game, it could be Shump one game. Uh, when Jr. Uh, got hurt in the first round, um, you know, with the little nagging injury, Shump started the second half. It was Shump. Tonight it was Kyle. So to have those three shooting guards that's capable of not only doing it on one end, but also could do it on the other end, it helps our team out a lot. I knew personally that when we made the trade for JR and Shump that we was getting guys that would sacrifice and, and do whatever it took to win. Shump has the, uh, the DNA of a defensive stopper, and I just had to challenge JR, and the team all challenged JR, and that's what he is now, also a knockdown shooter. And uh, obviously, we know what Kyle's ability to do. So those three guys just complement each other, and it's great to have them. Jeff. Jeff Zilk at USA Today. LeBron, at what point in your career did you sort of sense this three-point revolution coming? And why is it so important, that shot today, than it was even three, four seasons ago? For myself or for teams? For teams. Um, I think, I, I don't know what year it was. Um, you know, it helps when uh, Tim Duncan is not around uh, anymore, you know, because that guy, I've competed against him for years and years and years, and you, you couldn't stop him. So, um, you know, once, I think once teams figured out ways to just try to open the game up, um, you know, and create opportunities for guys that can slash, then that means you have to have some shooting. And um, I've been on both sides. I've been on... Uh, couple teams that didn't have much shooting and I've been on teams where I've had some of the all-time greatest shooters in NBA history um, but I don't know what year it was because um, it wasn't like that when I played in 07 uh, finals against Timmy D and those guys uh, they have a ton more shooting than us uh, we didn't have much shooting so um, and then I you know in 2012 when I'm in the finals again then it's a whole you know different thing so um, but I'm not quite sure the, the, the year, Jeff. Got our last two, Joe in the back, then Dave up front. Uh, Joe Gabriel, Cavs.com. LeBron, uh, 37 free throws last two games. Uh, is that something conscious that you've tried to do? And then what psychological effect do you think that has on the opponent, especially on the road? Uh, well, one, when you get to the free throw line, especially on the road, it quiets the crowd down when you make them, well, you know. I missed one, it got pretty loud, but when you make your free throws, um, it quiets the crowd down, but it also allows you to set your defense, you know, so, you know, it helps out a lot. It breaks the momentum of a ball club, um, and DeRozan was doing it to us. Couldn't get a good rhythm because he was going to the free throw line so much, and, you know, for me to be able to get to the free throw line and make my free throws, it just it keeps our defense in tune. You're able to communicate while the ball is stopped about exactly what we want to do defensively going back down on the other side, so um, it helps us out a lot. Dave. LeBron, you had that left-handed, I guess, turnaround shot in the lane in the fourth quarter. What determines the amount you go to your left-handed? You're obviously a left-handed person. And how did you end up being a right-handed basketball player? Like, how, how did that come about? Um, I have no idea how I became a right-hand basketball player. I think it was probably Michael Jordan, Penny Hardaway, guys that I looked up to growing up. i seen those guys shooting righty. Um, so, like, I guess I shoot righty, but... Um, yeah, I'm pretty much a, a left-hand guy. Um, I don't take many of those shots, but I'm capable of making those shots. Um, I don't know. I just I, I work on my craft. I work on both hands. You know, my little league coach, Frank Walker, told me if you can't make a left-hand layup, then you, you're not going to be much of anything of a basketball player. So he was the first one to, to teach me how to make a left-hand layup without even dribbling the ball. I just had to take two steps, uh, get my feet right, uh, left foot down, right foot down, and make a left-hand layup. And uh, that was from the first time, first practice I've ever had as playing organized basketball. And from that point on, I've worked on it every single day. So, but I have no idea why I became a righty. I just thought, I guess, it looked cool until I got older and I wish I was a lefty because those shots look a lot better than our righties. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody.